Morning. So, um, finally arrived uh, near the border uh, to Ukraine, Polish-Ukrainian border, um, after a, a mammoth drive yesterday. Set off at 8 o'clock in the morning and arrived um, at basically 2 o'clock um, this, this morning, whatever it was. So, it was a lot longer than we thought. But anyway, um, so a few hours sleep and today's the day we're actually rendezvousing uh, with our contacts on the border now. <laughs> I'll let you in know on something. We were, we, we, we were potentially actually going to head in to the Ukraine, to Lviv, um, uh, to make sure that things absolutely get, or, you know, absolutely to the more than front line. But um, we've been advised that now, just with the situation as it's escalating, that, uh, that, is, that is incredibly dangerous. Um, and that um, what we should do, um, is we should rendezvous with our contacts uh, on this side on the Polish border, right on the border of Ukraine. So we're going to go now to a few different um, refugee places on this side and also um, meet up with some people who are actually going back into Lviv and they will be taking medical supplies to the hospitals in Lviv. And, um, you know, so we know that they are absolutely going right to where they need to be. And I'll just show you the kind of thing that I've been looking at in the back of the van, seeing what we're carrying. Things like, you know, blood pressure monitors. And here, look, there's a ba baby fetal monitor. Um, uh, uh, ear thermometers and, and all this stuff. All this um, sort of medical uh, stuff for, 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 um, for hospitals and surgeries and whatever it might be. So... There is no doubt that what we're carrying is absolutely vital. So now I've got a feeling today, the rest of the day is going to be pretty traumatic. So um, I'm very nervous, but we've got a job to do and just got to focus on that. So um, yeah, I'll share with you what happens next. So I've arrived at one of the coordination points in um, Medica, uh, which is obviously uh, very, very, well, it's actually on the border of the Ukraine. There's people uh, coming across the border. And I guess this is one of the first places they come to and one of many because of reception areas. Uh, here they can get some medical aid um, and uh, obviously, I guess, register whatever whatever they do. Um, it's, uh, it's little things that get you though. It's, um, this is a kind of like reception area where they come into and uh, one of the first things that you come across is this huge pile of um, kids, bags, and uh, things that have, toys that have been donated, obviously. So hopefully the kids come in here and the first thing they do is they can maybe pick up a little bag, um, which has been donated by people wherever. Um, and, and a few things like toiletry supplies, uh, things that they need. Uh, and then they sort of move on and, and start their sort of process and whatever it is that, that happens next. So we're just waiting for the person who um, we're going to be giving our medical supplies and a few of the bits and pieces that he's actually going to take right into the Riv. Uh, and then we're going to go on to some of the centres where we can drop off some stuff like this ourselves. So I'm at one of the um, redistribution centres uh, where um, I guess humanitarian aid from all over uh, the world, maybe all over, certainly all over Europe, is being brought. Uh, and then it's all being loaded onto lorries to be redistributed um, to refugee centres uh, around the country. Um, so it's a, a hive of activity. So my guess is that these boxes, everything that's here has come from donations far and wide, Germany, uh, Holland, um, the UK, um, and it's, it's brought here, I mean just look at this over here, this massive pile of um, prams and, and things that people are going to need, so they've all been brought here, uh, lining with walking sticks um, and things, um, like medical supplies for people who are going to need them. And uh, as I said, it's all been loaded onto these trucks. Um, uh, just a steady flow of, of stuff uh, being, being redistributed here, uh, from here, uh, to presumably uh, other parts of Poland and refugee centres around the country where it's needed. Mm. 
so I just met this lady outside and you were collecting some things for your dog, but you, you were actually in, you're from Ukraine. You show me? Yeah, sh show me what you showed me just, just a second ago. Аптека, блядь. So today, um... 79, 79 uh, our children is died. Uh, this building today. Today. In our, today in our uh, native town in Chernigov. Um. We have no light, we have no warm, we have no water, and all our people is on the ground. Can you speak English? Yes. Where is this going? Uh, Ukraine, uh, Nikolai Kharkov. Oh, it's going into Here. Ukraine? Yes. Oh, wow. Amazing. Right, thank you. Then you've got everything. So this lorry is going into Ukraine? Yes. Wow. We are collecting from whole Europe uh, uh, different stuff and uh, loading trucks and buses to uh, Ukraine. Yes, the part of things uh, uh, is going to uh, army, part of for civilians, uh, for hospitals, uh, for uh, private persons, everything. How important are these donations that are coming from Europe? How important are they? It's very important. It's not necessary. They, they have nothing. They have really nothing. They have, they have no electricity, they have no water. Uh, uh, no batteries, no, no, no everything, no food. There is nothing in, in the east. Just wandering here very quickly. This huge great centre where it's all been reboxed. Um, Tins of food, everything else. But it is coming in here and then it is being uh, repackaged if required and uh, taken directly to where it's needed. Here we have hygiene, uh, sleeping bags, uh, isomates, uh, medicine, uh, food, baby food, uh, everything. Uh, th this is uh, medical stuff. Uh, the whole complex is full of, uh, full of uh, stuff from whole Europe. And it works. And work. Is there anything you need more than anything else? Yes, medical stuff. Med what medicaments, uh, painkillers, antibiotics, uh, irrigation. Oh, oh wow. Uh, irrigation okay. uh, uh, to, to block uh, blood. Uh, Tourniquets. Yes, yes, yes. Everything is uh, necessary. Everything, really. So, as you can see, just behind me, this pile of uh, just nappies and this room just filled with uh, things, blankets, clothing, sleeping bags. Um, but what what's really obvious is that all this stuff is not just lying here it's been moved out so it's coming here it's been coordinated um it's been packed up redistributed and then actually loaded onto uh, lorries outside there and taken to absolutely where it's needed right into the ukraine so donations from all over europe are coming in here um being sorted and then being repackaged over there. You can see people doing the boxing and stuff. Uh, and then put onto the trucks and absolutely going to where it's needed. So this is direct action, direct aid, going directly to the people who need it. Oh, so this is a reception point uh, in Medica on the border. And uh, Vito is uh, coordinating here uh, uh, the traffic of the refugees. So they were... Yes, uh, he's working for the uh, local fi uh, fi fire brigades. Uh, here in Przemysl, which is the big city that is directly connected with Lviv by uh, a, a train. 
So uh, the traffic that comes here, the refugees, they come uh, uh, to this reception point and VTOL is coordinating so they all get recorded and sent by either buses or by uh, train to different places in Poland, depends when they're willing to go. You know? Okay, so you just told me like quite a lot of the details what they do. So when the people come here, they get the registrate and they get the number. They got all the infrastructure for them, so like for just to get rest if they need uh, like to, because obviously they've been traveling for a long time. They get hot meal, they get shower, they get clothes and stuff if they need. So they uh, provide quite a lot uh, uh, aid, like the first aid for the people that have been traveling for a long time. And so he's coordinating all of it, and he's going to show us exactly how it works inside. You know? oh, okay. And how many people have been through here today? Uh, he said, okay, so... But at night we'll be able to full the whole village. Okay, he's already, the, the, this uh, building can cope with 400 people, but it's rotating. So 300 people gone already so far this morning, and there's 100 people left, but they're expecting to, to have another wave by the evening, which is gonna, and they will get just full, as he said, another like 400. That's how much, uh, that's how many people they can fit. Okay, so the uh, the difference between this uh, location and the other ones that also take refugees, this is a, a purely focus on uh, families with uh, uh, small children, like really small children. Because here it's like, uh, you have some um, friends here and you got police, it's protected, and it's sort of like, uh, just to make them uh, kids feel uh, <clears throat> more comfortable after all, obviously all the, and trauma they went through. So I, I think this is where they come first. This is the first step when they like literally uh, uh, when they come through. Tu jak małe dzieci wyjeżdżają, to dostają po plecaku z taką wyprawką. Okay, so actually this is the when uh, uh, they live in the place the, and the small every child here is receiving like a bag with uh, some goods inside. He said this is for the uh, like for the journey. So they have like a, <clears throat> a teddy bear or a toy, they got a car, they got some toiletries and uh, lots of sweets, you know. And this is, a, and I think there's a leaflet here as well. And every child who leaves here gets a bag like this. Yeah, they gets a bag like this. This is how they look after making sure all the children are really like, because it's a traumatic uh, experience for them when they come here. And, and you never know how long uh, they will carry on the journey for, you know, so uh, I mean, yeah, so you got like lots of stuff, your water, juice, uh, sweets, chocolate bars, teddy bear. And who puts these together? Kto ma ochotę w tych dzieciątków sobie wybiera sam co jakie ten i A kto robi te worki? Kto je tak organizuje? To wolontariat. Volunteers. Volunteers, to ludzie przywożą. Okay, so yeah, so there is uh, some, some, some of this is already coming like this, done by the other places when they are over donated. But most of it is done by, uh, by them here, mainly by the volunteers that Amazing. come in from all over the like Poland and the local people. Wow! He said that this is sort of the average. Uh, this is sort of an average uh, size room for this uh, point. Uh, look, yeah, reception points in the location here in this area. This is sort of an average size, and there's lots of them here, you know. And uh, and this is obviously used to be a, a sport hall, you know, and uh, and they. But they also use the warehouses, you know, they use uh, supermarkets, uh, warehouses, other, any sort of space they can. So everything turned into uh, the, the huge amount of the people that are passing the border. Because you have the border cross, just literally like a mile away from here. And if this one place takes nearly a thousand people per day, so imagine if there's like lots of places like this, like within the like, few miles radius you know so they take thousands and thousands of people per day coming through that little cross uh, <coughs> the border cross here in Medica you know? so I'm now in um, the reception center uh, one of the many reception centers for the people coming across the border and uh, you can just see these long lines of camp beds these families this particular reception center is uh, specifically for uh, families with younger children. It's very well protected with 
uh, police and security guards outside so that they get here at least they're going to be safe um, but let's look at this room i mean can you just try and work out how many families are here all uh, on these beds but you know just amidst it all you just get to see these groups of young kids just trying to carry on regardless Yeah.